All right, so with Aisha here now, we can bring you Join Us Interactive. Hello, Aisha. <laughs> Hello, Israel. And it's been an exciting week, and today is no exception. You agree, right? Well, yeah. With very, a lot of interesting busy. stuff and the climax, the nomination of the new uh, CJ. New CJ. A lot of people were taken by surprise, though. But you know how to join this conversation is on facebook.com slash join news on TV. On Twitter, it's on join news on TV. And you know the rules. So let's keep it tight, especially today. It's a Friday. Let's save some of the energy for after what? And let's have a beautiful conversation and... Um, the president has officially nominated um, Justice Sophia Ekufu as the next Chief Justice pending parliamentary approval. Before today's appointment, a lot of names popped up, including Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Doce. As we wait for um, her approval by parliament, the simple question I ask is, how do you feel about Justice Sophia Ekufu's nomination? <laughs> I think for someone like the president who has had a, a very long working relations, uh, relationship with uh, uh, the nominee for Chief Justice, uh, Justice Sofa Akufo, he's in the best position to know her capabilities. And uh, what we need is a competent person. And when you, you, you look at um, Justice Sofa Akufo, you realize that she, she is someone who is uh, a competent um, judge. She wouldn't have risen that high if she were not competent. Okay, first of all, I'd like to state clearly that this issue of women going into political power, a uh, woman having political power, and this whole gender bias is not really something that we should engage in. Um, we should first look at the qualification of the woman. If you look at her background, I think that she's qualified enough to take up this appointment. And I think this is a good initiative on the president's behalf because it's a way by which we are empowering our women in the country. So I don't think that it's, it's, it's based on family relations or anything. I think that it's based on qualifications and people should try to be objective about this appointment. We need another lady. You know, we have three arms of government in the system. The executive, the judiciary, and the legislature, right? The executive is being led by a president, who is a, 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 a guy, a man, of course. And then the legislature, another guy. And then I think the executive should be a little of what? Gender balance in this whole issue. So I don't see why people are saying it's a family and friends issue. What is family and friends about this thing? A lady was occupying the position. She's going on retirement. And the president said, I'm not just what? Uh, occupy that position. What is the big deal about family and friends? Because here we are talking of, uh, of um, the gender balancing, right? And if you look at the hierarchy or the um, leadership hierarchy, president, vice president, speaker of parliament, all right, and uh, so far it's fortunate because um, in, in terms of uh, b b gender balance, uh, there's nothing the president can do about it. So that is what all Ghanaians are calling for. Because when we talk of gender balance, you know, we need to see it within the governance. And so if Sophia is appointed as the chief justice, I think it's in the right direction. <laughs> All right, so a lot of the comments are also on Facebook. Israel, help us read them. Bilal Damon says, maybe because she bears part of his name, that is a Kufu. Uh, Kweju Abdul says, probably. Those calling for the gender balance uh, base their shout out on the fact that greater percentage of women perform creditably when pushed to occupy positions like that. A lordship Georgina Wood is a living example. Mabel Jade says, I am for gender balance, selecting qualified individuals for the right job. So once the lady is capable of delivering on that mandate, then it's a win-win situation. Good for women, good for our democracy. And uh, Alaji Davido says, if she's qualified and can do the job, then I think it is not gender balance. And KH Ray says, we just need a good administration. That's all. Sally Susetre says, the woman is competent and not only because of gender balance. Hard work pays and moreover, looking at the justices in the Supreme Court now, I think she's the only justice who have more years to go on retirement. Um, I think I beg to differ on that. She is rather uh, nearer to her okay, retirement. So the, the, uh, 
Well, apparently, Justice Atugaba is closer to retirement than, than. Uh, she is, and she's second uh, oh. most senior. Okay, and, uh, but if you look at all the names that popped up, she's the one closer to retirement, right? right? And so she's qualified for the job, so my humble opinion, that's what we say. Abdul uh, Jalil says that is good. Real Biggie says uh, gender, I think, doesn't matter here, only that she can deliver. Why not? Uh, Francis says he makes a solid sense, but and he leaves it there. Kornejie says, My sister, look, my sister, look, what Ghanaians need is the chief justice, and that is what the president is about to do. Whether gender equality or call it what, we have a chief justice, period. Foster says, There is nothing about gender here. Nanado is only appointing his family members from both the maternal and paternal side. And he puts hashtag substandard government. Sana Muhammad says, yes, is uh, as a result of gender because at least one arm of government should be given or handled by a lady. And those are your humble comments on Facebook. JD Bless says, I really support the idea of gender balance. But the most important thing is if she is qualified and also can do the work she has been assigned to do, I wish Mother Ghana well. Okay, interesting comments there, but also this coming Sunday is Mother's Day and it's set aside to celebrate the many ways mothers influence the lives of their children. Interestingly, ahead of the day, there's a letter circulating on social media stating that the husbands will spend the day pampering their mothers and not their wives. So the children should also pamper their mothers. And the question I ask, how do you respond to the statement? Uh, quite a dicey question, uh, but be it as it may, considering the nature of your question, it appears that it should be a case of an option. Either you pamper mommy or you pamper wife. I will go for mommy. There's no two ways about it. It's Mother's Day. Of course, all mothers are deserving of the right to be celebrated. But the woman who gave birth to me and mothered me to this stage is the one I will be celebrating than any other person. Yeah, exactly, because as you rightly said, children and then what? I have my mother and my wife as well also have children. So the thing is, I would rather like to pamper my mother than you, the children, to handle your mother. Because we have Valentine's Day, we have uh, other days that we always like treat our wives and then make them feel that they, uh, they, we, we value them. So in my own opinion, I think they, they have no point, it's baseless. Because you are, if you're going to pamper your, your biological mother, who's going to pamper the small boys or the small girls at home? Just, you know, put both sides together, pamper each and everyone, but your mother is still your mother. Your wife is, quote unquote, your mother. So I, mean, I think bring, all both, 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 bring both of them on board and let's celebrate them. Mothers play an important role in our life. No matter what, they are still our mothers. Our wives are still our mothers. So let's bring them both together and celebrate them. <laughs> And I think I totally agree with the last speaker. Of course, if you're going to celebrate your mother, don't forget that at the point that your mother stopped nursing you is your wife who took over. And the days that you come back from work and you need some pampering, oh. it was your wife who did it. And yeah, but so, she didn't do it as a mother. She did it as a wife. But she's still your mother. I mean, no. wives play some roles as mothers. And even on top of it, if you had babies with your 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 wife and the children, I mean, they're very little children who can barely understand what Mother's Day is all about. Are you saying that your wife will not be celebrated on Mother's Day? You have to do it on, on their behalf. Mother's okay. Appreciation Day. So Mother it's, it's mothers who have to, I mean, the children have to appreciate them. And so, so at that time, I mean, if your kids are young, they're going to come to you and say Happy Mother's Day to you. Even if they were two months old babies? Well, if they're two months, then well, tough luck. You have to wait. No, but the father can do it for the, the baby. Oh, no. The, the mother should wait. can do the it for the baby. Wait. And we'll don't forget when you start um, struggling with the baby for something from your wife, then that's when she starts uh, playing the mother's role. And so definitely she has played some mother role in your mother. life. So you have to give her some attention on Mother's Day. Mother. And I, I think I, 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 I like the guy who spoke last. He says, it's, it's, I mean, 
We shouldn't take them serious. <laughs> Let's check what you've been saying on Facebook. Well, it's just a couple of comments. Uh, Hakem says, uh, she's my everything. God first, mom next. Uh, Asha Mother says, I miss my mother. Happy Mother's Day to her. <laughs> okay. Father's Day will come and we'll see whether you would allow the wives to celebrate only their fathers and not you. Not to come and say to you, oh, well, happy yeah. Father's Day on behalf of my kids. I'm sure you'll be hurt if happy we don't. Happy Father's do. Day? No, it's not really a big deal. It is. It is. It is a big deal. You know, fathers, we, we're, not so, um, we're not so fatty about these things like <laughs> the mothers are. Okay. Like you mothers are. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see about it. And finally, when asked what makes one an ideal woman, the wife of a popular Ghanaian pastor shared this view. She says, it is when that woman takes time to take care of her home, children and husband, as well as enjoy the liberty of not having to worry about paying bills. Well, this has sparked a passionate discussion on social media with some mixed reactions. Question I ask, what is your description of an ideal woman? <laughs> say I should be balanced you know a guy on the other side then the lady to the woman to on the other side you know both hands helping each other but you stay staying at home claiming that you're a housewife I think in this 21st century that thing is not allowed because you wouldn't have I wouldn't marry a woman who is come to be a housewife I think it's a combination of both. Someone who is working at the same time is able to manage um, both work and then the house duties. I mean, she shouldn't have to neglect one. She should be able to manage both very well. So that, to me, that is the definition of an ideal woman. An ideal woman should be able to work, to uh, combine both being a housewife and a working class lady to be able to support the husband. That's who I see to be an ideal woman. Not necessarily being at home. Gone are the days where the times where uh, the women would have to sit home for their husband to work and take care of the house chores and all that things. But then, like, the world is evolving. So many things are changing and happening. So an ideal woman should be able to work, to be a sophisticated lady, working class, but then still do the normal house chores they used to do to help their husbands. Mm, ideal is relative. What might be ideal for me might not be ideal for you, but an ideal woman should be a career woman as well as a wife, a mother, everything. So you can't just be a woman and then be in the house, being a housewife. No, you need to support your husband in everything that is happening in the home. You need to do something that would generate income for the home. Don't just rely on your husband for everything. We are just human and anything can happen at any point in time. Who wants to celebrate your Chelsea win? Let's hear you, Israel. <laughs> well, it just turns out that uh, Chelsea, they've been crowned the EPL champions after uh, beating West Bromwich Albion. So they just needed this win and that's it. They sealed it and uh, they've left everybody else in the trail. They've left uh, Manchester United, Manchester City, Tottenham, and everybody else in, in their trail. Co so congratulations to Chelsea. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, go ahead. Congratulations, Chelsea. <laughs> okay, congratulations, Israel. The viewers should be here to see how you're jumping in the studio. Congratulations. And that well, it's just a normal, I mean... Is it? Just won the title and... Like you win titles all the time. Yeah, but you're extremely happy about that. And so is all Chelsea fans, right? Still blue, yeah. <laughs> yes, still blue, he says. And that's how we wrap up the interactive segment. My name is Aisha Brian. You know how we do it on Friday. Don't miss out uh, from the fan. But PM Express comes up shortly. Stay tuned.